Alrighty guys, Drax here with 25 plus tips to help you master your adventures in Power World. I've tried to make these as comprehensive as possible without going on for too long, so let's get straight into it. And first up is to make sure to feed your powers food that gives them sanity, otherwise they will get sick a lot. I find salad is pretty easy to make later on and one of the best foods for a good mix of nutrition and sanity. But early game, just make sure to bake those berries on a fire and move on to making a jam filled bun at level 15 once you have that wheat plantation and can make flour in the mill. Jam filled buns are basically the best sanity per food eaten and they're really simple easy to make so you can keep on making them if you wish. And powers eat from left to right in the feed box so or put them in that order of what you want them to eat first. Find Lithmunk effigies for more capture rate. Who wouldn't want to capture pals easier? All you need is a basic flyer and a bit of darkness, and they are really easy to see at night, and this is the perfect time to hunt for them. You can also still do the jump on top of a pal sphere thingy, and when a successful capture goes through, this will shoot you into the air, and you can glide towards those effigies. Quite fun, actually. You can make a little game of it. Note that if you do reset your character at all, all of these reset also, and you will have to find them again in the world. Gliding pals are better than the glider. You use less stam, you travel further. If you use a pal condensator, you will level up their glide ability, more speed and less stam drain. And my personal preference is the Gale Claw, as it offers the best speed gliding and is great for moving around the base and also dodging boss attacks during battles. Talking now about that condensator unlocked at level 14 under Ancient Tech. This is used to infuse pals together for better partner skills. And some of these have massive benefits like extra damage and ranch animals will output more produce. A male cat often found in lower level dungeons can dig up endless amounts of gold. And a Vixie can dig up pal spheres, even mega spheres when leveled up a couple times in the condenser. Make sure to get the egg incubator as soon as you can and go collect eggs for a great chance at getting some top pals, even in the early game. I managed to get some top tier creatures by finding their eggs early, some that I wasn't even able to tame at that stage of the game, so it's always worth going and getting those eggs, especially the huge ones when you see them. That leads me into want to go into the coldest or hottest places on the map before you even have good enough protective gear. Maybe to search for some eggs in those regions. Get yourself a Kitson. This can spawn on the snowy mountain at night, but another easy route is through breeding. I'd recommend a Pen King bred with a ruby for simplicity. Pen King from the level 15 boss area and ruby is around these areas, the starter areas. Breed them together, hatch the egg and you've got yourself a mount you can go nearly anywhere with. How do you treat or heal pals? But well, this one can get a bit tricky if you have multiple different pals owned by different people working at a base. But simply put, you can always heal or treat them. If they are yours, you will be able to go up to them and press 4 on a keyboard or right click the analog stick and choose the option to feed then use the appropriate medicine. If they aren't yours, then drag them from the base into your party, hit the use key or the Y button on the medicine and then click on the ill worker to use. Place them back in the base and they are good to go. Capture the raid pals, those ones that raid your base to save you traveling to get them. Anytime you get one of those raids, think of it as an opportunity to get some extra new pals. I got a few this way early on in the game that I wouldn't have seen otherwise till nearly end game. They normally come in around your level, so you should always be able to capture them if they are weakened enough and you're using the right spheres. What spheres for what level you might ask? Basically just follow the rule that when you unlock them at that level use them on the corresponding level creature. Just always aim to get them on a smidge of HP so they will have more of a chance to stay in the sphere. Also make use of the stun button early on or later on you'll be using those shocks and trap attacks that you have on the pals as they can up your chance to capture. To get extra technology points, maybe you're missing a few to unlock that next thing that you want. You can find fast travel points across the map. You can complete dungeons and open chests. And you can also find chests on the sanctuary islands located at these three places on the map. When entering the tower boss arenas with friends, some of us originally kept trying to time it as we had like 10 seconds to join system. All you have to do is tap 
F or X on the controller to be put into the lobby. And then when the final person is in, one of you can hold that same button again to start the battle. To save a power being incapacitated, switch them out when they are low in HP. Otherwise, you would get a 10 minute wait time before they can be used again. Cycling powers during a fight will allow them to heal in their sphere and get back in the fight again shortly. If they do get incapacitated, place them in your base instead of the power box. This is probably a bug. Maybe it's going to be patched later on. But for now, this actually brings them back a lot quicker. Once leveled up, your powers may learn more than three skills. And some of the old ones you like using may be switched out. You can switch these back or try out new skills by going to the party screen and clicking on the power. And then click on whatever skills you want to change. You can also teach your powers new skills by finding fruit consumables around the map. So if you find a skill you like on one power, you can nearly always teach it to another. If you don't want to fix everything via repair kits, maybe after a raid, then I find the best thing to do is go into disassembly mode, break down whatever was damaged and rebuild it. This gives you all the materials back that it originally took to build and you can simply build it again. Also, instead of having just you to repair it, the whole base of pals with their handicraft ability will come by and help you out. I've seen a lot of people when trying to tame creatures put their pals away last second or try to throw a sphere quickly before their pal kills it. A simple way is to press 4 on a keyboard or click the right analog stick on the controller and simply tell your pal to stop attacking. Turn pals up the drop rate of enemies when defeated. Catris, for example, ups the drop rate of neutral damage pals. Penking ups the drop rate of fire pals. And there are many others. So make sure to check that partner skill and use one of those if you're going to farm a certain type of pal for a certain thing. Always keep a handicraft pal in your party just in case other base pals are busy. Sometimes the base can get crazy busy with just a few of us on. And just having that handicraft pal ready to craft your ammo or spheres can be a great time saver. Throw them directly at the workstation to get them on the job. The legend passive trait and other specific boss traits can be passed from the top powers in the game to any below it. So before you go crazy with breeding, it may be worth looking to get those in your breeding lines. Otherwise, you'll probably want to backbreed it later on and that can get rather tricky. Instead, I would say... Do a bit of condensing, maybe for a couple levels if you want. But more importantly, use those power souls that you collect around the world to up your power's health, attack and defense. You can always remove these again at the cost of gold. And gold is pretty easy to farm as you go on in the game. You can only have four ranch powers in a ranch at any time. The fifth one will just wander off. If you want more than four, then you will need to build a second ranch. Or just make sure to assign the ones that you want in the ranch by throwing them at it. It's always good to assign creatures to whatever post you really want them at. As this can make them more efficient. If you get any precious items in your inventory from bosses and chests. Those can be all sold to a merchant for gold. They aren't used for anything in crafting. So go ahead and sell them. I think they always say precious items on the top. Notice that a lot of people saving them up around my base and around other bases. But you can just go ahead and sell them and you'll get a decent amount of gold. On the same lines, you can farm gold by killing the Black Marketeer if you're strong enough. Then my suggestion is to use that gold to buy materials like bone and leather at the merchants to save you time. Capture these merchants and you can place them at your base to buy or sell from any time you like. Certain powers will add a party buff to the power you are using. Check out the partner skill on smaller powers to see who they can buff up. A simple example is Spark It who buffs the attack power of electric powers. And the more you have, the better it gets. I believe I saw it starts at 10% extra damage and you can condense up to 20% extra damage just on one extra power. So if you have your main power and your four others, that's 80% extra damage. That's crazy. The biggest and strongest combos come from Sweepers and Swees and Elizabeths with B-Guards. You can nearly get 100% extra damage and defense on those two combos when you do some condensing. But how about that weight? A weight was a big issue, but thanks to the devs recently allowing you to move even when you're overweight, it's not such a big one anymore. But if you want even more weight, get some Wumpos in your party. 
they will give you the biggest weight increase possible and more every time you condense them together. Now early game, go for cativas, just get a few of them and that will help you out. But later game, you're going to want these wampos. That's like the end game weight. How? Wampos only spawn in the cold areas though, so you will need some cold resistant gear if you want to capture them or get their eggs. Maybe use that kitson if need be and look out for large frozen eggs if you want to get some wampos early. Or another option, you can get a Wumpo Batan boss version, level 38 on the eastern wild island. Breed them together, get a few, and you will be able to up that weight capacity greatly. Inventory management here, and we've got a multi-tip point. To start with, press R or right bumper to quick stack. Whatever is in your inventory will automatically get stacked onto what is already in the chest. Everything else will be left behind. It's much faster. You can also start dragging a heavy pile of items to your inventory, but before you actually place it in there, keep the button held, come out of the inventory and walk towards your target chest or fast travel and then place them inside the inventory. A handy way to move stuff around the base rather quickly. And if you are moving your base, this will help you out a lot. You can press the sort button at the top to refresh the spore times on anything perishable in an inventory. This is a real good one for your fridge. And don't be dragging anything from one inventory to another. Left click or use the Y button will transfer things straight over. There's not many inventory spaces, so managing it well will save you a lot of time. And finally, make sure to use the many useful websites available to you when playing this game. Map Genie has an interactive map to help you find stuff. Palpedia offers a comprehensive look at pal stats, a breeding calculator and skills. And there are many, many more top websites popping up every day. I'll list all the ones that I've been using in the description. With that, that is all 25 plus tips in this video. If you would like to see more from me in the future, make sure to hit that like button. Drop a comment if any of these tips helped you out and make sure to share it if you think it can help others too. Subscribe for more videos like this one and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.